Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the importance of selecting the correct glide speed in the event that you have to turn your nice powered airplane into a glider. Now the reason we have a gliding speed of course is in the event that something does happen that makes us so that we can't safely continue our flight, we have the ability to carefully identify where on the ground we're going to end up, again not become a victim too. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate this in a simple experimental form. What we're going to do is we're going to fly the plane at the correct glide speed, then we're going to fly it at the wrong glide speed, and then we're going to try it again at a glide speed that is uh, too fast and too slow. So you can see exactly what happens. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unpause real quick. And we've had an engine failure. I'm going to go ahead and establish a glide speed of 70 knots. Now on a 172, this is super easy because what you do in the real world is you grab the trim wheel and you crank on it all the way up and you let go. All right, so I am doing my glide speed of 70 knots here. I'm just looking out the window. Everything's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to maintain this glide speed of 70 knots. Again, we started at about 1,800 feet there, so you can see exactly what it looks like. So I'm not trying to make the plane go fast. I'm not trying to make the plane go slow. I'm just keeping it right on the glide speed. Keep in mind, the glide speed of your aircraft is going to be dependent on things such as how heavy you are. It's going to be dependent on things such as, you know, um, do you have your flaps down, things like that. But for us, like I said, we're going to hold about 70 knots, about as close as I can get to it. It is a tremendously gusty day today, which makes this very difficult to do. So we're holding our 70 knots, uh, just like the manufacturer recommended for this particular uh, configuration, this particular weight. And we seem to be doing okay. Uh, like I said, we got some pretty bad turbulence today, which makes things a little interesting for us, but nothing new. And you can see that I'm easily able to look out the window and identify exactly where I'm going to end up smacking to the ground. In this case, uh, we're probably going to end up hitting about the midfield. And like I said, I'm not going to affect the proper landing here. I'm just going to run the plane into the ground so everybody can see what happens here. Getting close. Uh, that's about 70 knots again. Now notice just how far I'm able to stretch the glide on this. And yes, my throttle is at zero in case you were curious. I'm not popping my flaps down. I'm just maintaining the desired speed here. Again, the manufacturer spent a long time figuring out what the heck that speed is. We might as well take advantage of that information. And you can see on uh, my final touch and crash into the ground point is actually just in room that I could probably make this work. Can I make this work? Let's try it. <laughs> it turns out I could make it work with a tailwind. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so I'm safe. The airplane's fine. Um, you can see we're able to affect the landing there. So let's go ahead and grab the plane. Going up. Um, uh, also ground handling. I'll pop up to my 1,800 feet again. Uh, 1,800 feet is about right here. And again, uh, we're not going to have an exact uh, simulacrum here. Whoa. Um, did I just flip upside down? I did. Uh, I love this game sometimes because it does things that make sense and then it makes things that don't make sense. Oh, it makes me crazy. Pop it back up. Hopefully I have some airspeed now. Sweet! So now what we're going to do is we're going to intentionally fly at the wrong airspeed. Actually, we've got a little bit too much altitude here. Let's go ahead and lose a little bit of it. There we go. Now we're in business. So I'm going to pull the throttle back and this time I'm going to set my glide speed to be, uh, let's call it my glide speed. Uh, we'll do 100 knots as a glide speed. Let's see what happens. All right, holding 100 knots. Whoop, a little bit too fast. I'll pull the nose up just a little bit. Again, my flaps are up. My engine's at zero. We're just holding 100 knots by sticking the nose of the plane down, trying to maintain that handy-dandy glide speed here. All right, we're going pretty well here. This is actually not the 100 knots marker. This is the 105 knots marker, but oh well. I believe actually it's 110, my bad. But either way, it'll demonstrate my point pretty fast. Oop, getting a little fast here. I'm going to pull the nose up. I'll let the nose come back down again. Again, we're going to maintain right on that line. Going real fast here. Oh yeah, real fast, real fast. Whoop, whoop, too much, too much. Pull the nose up. There we go, yeah, about 103, 104 right there. And notice we are much, 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 much shorter down the runway here. Now, some of you are saying uh, that's not a problem because you're still gonna be able to land the plane in time. Uh, absolutely, I will be able to land the plane in time. Uh, keep in mind in the real world, this plane would never stick to the ground at 100 knots. It would go bang, bounce, 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 the entire length of the runway. So you notice my distance was reduced by nearly a mile. So I'm gonna go ahead and I give it full throttle again. Oh, I feel sorry for this airplane. I, I'm just so mean to this plane. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna intentionally fly significantly below the glide speed of the airplane. So you can see exactly the impact that's gonna have. Go ahead and, uh, by the way, this is a runway in the real world looks exactly like this when you go off the end of it. It's actually kind of fun. Woo, all right, going backwards. Again, this is all an estimate. Uh, some of the distances will not be the same, but the effect is very, very clear. And like I said, you'll be able to see it pretty much right away. Okay, let's do it. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use the manufacturer's recommended airspeed here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use significantly under the manufacturer's recommended airspeed. I'm going to go at 50 knots. Go ahead, trim, 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 trim. Go on up, press the trim wheel. Okay, so in the real plane, you can't actually trim the nose up that high. That's, that's not realistic. <laughs> Sorry, Microsoft, you're not right on that one. Like, I'm looking down. See how you still have trim? The real plane can't do that. The trim is just, it just doesn't work that way. Okay, so what do I notice? Uh, first thing I notice, I've let go of the controls and it's still fine. <laughs> Uh, the second thing I've noticed is the fact that uh, we're crawling here. We're barely, 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 barely approaching the ground. And I also noticed I can't see out the front windshield because my nose is up so high. Uh, anybody who knows anything about nose up high simply means you know, you're basically right on the edge of a stall and things could end really, really bad for you if we do stall and we have no engine to recover with. Again, I'm just holding that forward 50 knots. Now in the real plane, you start getting this weird little like buffeting thing that it starts doing. It doesn't, it does not tolerate this as nearly as much as it's tolerating it in the simulator. So again, I'm just like going the controls. You can see I'm not touching anything. I don't need to because I trimmed my plane out. And it's what you're supposed to do. Oh boy. Oh, we just got a nice little gust of wind there. Nothing typical. Look at how dangerous this is. One gust of wind is going to stall this airplane. As a matter of fact, you probably will hear the stall alarm in a second. I didn't want to do it to me today. Lame. And you can see that whereas in the first time when I used the correct distance, I actually had plenty of room. Keep in mind, we started closer to the end of the runway here. Should have been slightly more scientific about this, but you have the idea. Notice um, we're very, very slow. Uh, notice the fact that we've used significantly a more runway. I should say less runway than we would have had otherwise. But also notice the fact that when I go to land this thing, which let me back myself up just a tiny bit so I can affect the landing. Whoa. I am so slow that when I go to lift the nose up, you're going to hear a stall warning that's going to suddenly freak out at me pretty quickly. Ready? Let's go do it. You got to touch. Look. Oh, my God. The trim on this thing. Is, look, I'm going to look at the controls. <laughs> look at the trim. Keep my nose up. All right. So go ahead and now do an emergency break here. Right into the... Uh, no, 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 no. Into the grass. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Made it. All right, so what are the takeaways? Um, if we come in too fast, uh, we ran into a problem where we were way, way, way down here. Keep in mind, this wasn't scientific, but you could see physically the difference. When we came in just right, we had all afternoon to plan our position. We were easily able to calculate. We were able to safely affect the landing with normal flare. Uh, when we came in too slow, we barely saw the ground, the entire approach making it difficult to spot. And realistically, had we started the same distance as the other two, we would have been about right here. Uh, one thing Flight Sim does not do well is the, basically the extra drag you get when you're really, really nose up which is unfortunate. It has something to do with the shape of the plane and that extra induced drag. But if it were there, we could play with it. And I think that will be our next video, actually. Enjoy.